Hi everyone. As was mentioned, our topic today is U.S. race classification and Arab Americans. And to start our discussion, I have a question for you. I want you to take a look at these photos here. What do all of these people have in common? There may be some familiar faces. We have everyone from our student trustee, Ayman al Maladi, right down there in the corner in the blue tie, to some of our Arab Student Union students. And then people like Tom Cruise and Jennifer Aniston. If you don't know the gentleman in the blue shirt and uh, black jacket, that's John Cotter. He's a famous Harvard business professor. And that's me getting ready for the Moraine Valley graduation. It's always a fun day. The gentleman in the brown t-shirt, he's a famous Egyptian heartthrob, actually. He's been famous for many years, is known as a pop singer in the Middle East and Arab world. And the gentleman down at the bottom is the former um, king of Jordan, King Hussein. So you might be looking at all of these pictures and thinking, what do all of these people have in common? Well, if they were taking the US Census today, they would all be considered white. So let's take a look at the race questions on the US Census. What does the US Census ask us about race? Well, there's two questions regarding race on the US Census. Question number eight refers to people of Hispanic, Latino, or Spanish origin. And you have some options there to answer no or some sub-options for yes. And then you would move on to question number nine that would ask you, are you white, black, American Indian? Perhaps you're Korean, Vietnamese, or even Samoan. Well, if you don't find a box that fits you, you can always write something in, in the some other race category. Well, if you didn't figure out from the first slide, Arab Americans are known as white. Who else is known as white in this country? Let's look at the definition. White refers to people having origins in any of the original peoples of Europe, the Middle East, or North Africa. It includes people who, who indicated their race as white or reported entries such as Irish, German, Italian, Lebanese, Arab, Moroccan, or Caucasian. So as you can see, white can actually be very diverse and mean many different things. Once upon a time, some of the first Arabs that came to this country actually advocated to be white. You might be wondering, how did you end up being considered white in the first place? Well, at a time in our history when very few people had eligibility to become citizens, the Arabs that came to this country wanted that right as well. And so they fought to be counted as white. Many times they were considered Asian, sometimes white, sometimes black, other Asian, perhaps as Turks or even colored. And they knew that in order to gain citizenship rights, they would have to be counted as white. So around 1923, 1924, Syrians from the area known then as Greater Syria and modern day Lebanon, Syria, Palestine, and Jordan fought to be counted as Caucasian in order to overcome that unwelcome mat and become citizens of this country. Well, this topic of should Arab Americans continue to be counted as white has been a topic of discussion among the Arab American community in recent years and throughout the country it's been such a profound discussion that a popular Arab American comedian even decided to make a documentary film about it called We're Not White. Well, what are people saying? I'll show you in this short video clip. Do I really exist? You know, I don't see myself here, you know, what's going on, what's the story? So he's like, you know, just put white, you know, you guys are white. We're not white. You consider yourself white? No. I am an Arab and I am an American. I am not white. I'm very passionate about things in life and one of them is the, my identity as an Arab American. Should we be qualified as a minority or it's better if you become in the mainstream? Do you feel white? I mean, I haven't tanned in a while, so yeah, I, most of the time I do. <laughs> do Arabs deserve a box? Yeah, we deserve a box. 
even a little one. I think that Arab Americans should have an entire page. And let me tell you. <laughs> How you count people matters. The door is closed to many other benefits we could be receiving. I bought other and bought Arab, but I don't know. Nobody probably will look at it. I think I put white, non Hispanic. Every other place that you go, you know, being Middle Eastern is a recognized nationality. It's the what? And, and you don't matter. How would it make you feel if you actually saw that box on the floor? <laughs> we are a citizen. This is our country. We are part of this country. Why? Because it talks about uh, equality and equal recognition. We have a race. We have a race. That, that consists of uh, all religions, Jews, Muslims, and Christians. You agree, we're not white. We're brown. <laughs> <laughs> white people don't think we're white. If we're going to be treated as a different race, then I would expect to be classified as a different race. We don't exist. I write a comment, please next time acknowledge that I exist. Why did you come to America? For the dream. So you can see from watching this teaser that there are some different ranges of opinion, but many Arab Americans do believe we're not white. We're not quite white. Well, one guy said, I just need a tan, but most of the time I feel white. So again, do Arabs count as white? Should they count as white? And why does this matter anyways? Well, the U.S. Census tracks race in this country to make policy, particularly for civil rights. So it's very important that we have an accurate count of the various diverse groups that work, that live in our country. You might even be wondering how many Arab Americans live in the U.S., how many Arab Americans are in each state, or even how many Arab Americans are enrolled in college. At an institution like Moraine Valley, we don't have an answer like that. So that's why it matters. That's why we should be counted. Well, currently, we can't answer any of those questions accurately. So who are Arabs anyways? This term is a broad term that's used to describe people from 22 different countries. Yes, they have a common language, which is Arabic, and some shared values, customs, and traditions, but there's distinct cultures and heritage that do hail from each one of these countries. There's many things that Arabs might have in common, but they also have many differences as well. Some of them share a history that they have in common from the history of colonization and war in, the, in their area. But there's also a rich history, a deep history, advancement from the Islamic empire came from this area. Let's talk a little bit about phases of immigration of Arab Americans in this country. Well, some historians have documented that some of the first Arabs actually came as slaves from North Africa. However, in the late 1800s and the early 1900s is what historians consider the first wave of Arab Americans that came to this country. The majority of them were Christian from greater Syria, from what would be considered modern day Syria and Lebanon. And they came here for better opportunities, perhaps not knowing if they were gonna stay or go back, but they integrated. They were the ones that fought to be white. The second wave would be considered around the 1950s and 1960s, during this post-World War II era, when the brain drain was happening in this country. Foreign professionals were coming, many times highly educated, and they were welcomed. And many people, again, from the region, maybe came not knowing if they were gonna stay or if they were gonna go back, but many of them stayed. And then the third wave is what we would consider the 1970s to present. People come from the Middle East and the Arab world for many different reasons, again, from diverse communities. The brain drain continued. Many of the highly educated professionals that came to this country contributed to build this society and continue to do so today. There are some demographics that we're able to get from the U.S. Census, a little bit of data. We get that by looking at the information we get from the ancestry question on the long form of the U.S. Census. That's not the form that everybody gets to answer. So the U.S. Census says, well, we think that there's about 1.7 million Arabs in this country. But if you ask the Arab American Institute in Washington, D.C., who does their own counts, they estimate that it's at least 3.5 million. And I want to emphasize the at least part. We do know that the majority of Arabs do go to metropolitan areas. We're in all 50 states, but the majority of Arab Americans live in the Los Angeles area and the New York, New Jersey area, 
Chicago, Detroit, Washington, DC. And the religion of Arab Americans is diverse as well. Contrary to popular belief, not all Arabs are Muslims and not all Muslims are Arab. If you live in the south side of Chicago, you may think all Arabs are Muslim because we do have a large Muslim community um, in the surrounding area here. However, the majority of Arabs in this country are actually Christian and they come from different denominations as well. So again, diverse in appearance, diverse in culture, and also diverse in religion. So what's contributed to this not quite white feeling? Why is it that Arabs feel not quite white? Well, many different things. Think about the historic experiences that Arabs have had in this country. Well, they had to fight to be white in the first place, so they were told they were other when they got here. But then as time went on, Arabs came for different reasons. And the wars in the Middle East and U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East and the Arab world has also contributed to Arab Americans feeling somewhat like the other in this country. Think about perceptions of Arabs in the post 9-11 era. When you turn on the news, how are Arabs usually portrayed? How are they described? Usually with negativity, sometimes as terrorists. So what, does, what ends up happening as a result of this? Well, Arab Americans sometimes find themselves have, having an identity crisis. Are we white? Are we not white? Are we brown? Are we other? Do other people see us as white? How do we negotiate our Arab heritage and our American pride? For many of us that have parents that were born overseas and then came here and we were born here, we find ourselves in this sometimes balancing act of are we Arab? Are we American? Are we white? Maybe we're all three. Arab Americans have spoken out about this in various ways and like the documentary clip that you saw previously, there's other Arab American comedians that have talked about the Arab American experience post 9-11. One of them was Dina Abadella, and if the clip decides to work, you're gonna get to see it in just a moment. Dina Abadella was featured in a PBS documentary um, about the Arab and Muslim experience post 9-11. And here he's going to talk a little bit about why Arabs decided to use comedy um, in the post 9-11 era to talk about their experience. Dean and Ahmed are just a couple of the many Arab Americans that talk about their experience as Arab Americans. And you'll get to see the clip here. This is a special presentation of America at a Crossroads. I really wish that a drug company in America would have come out with a medication for us, like our own Paxil or Zoloft. I could turn on TV and say, hello, are you depressed because no one wants to fly in the same plane as you? Are you anxious because you resemble several people on the government's most wanted list? Are you angry because every time you go to the airport, you're randomly selected for extra screening? And you need Arabagon. I started taking Arabic lessons after 9-11, never did before. Joined Arab American groups, talked about it in my act much more. It became such a big part of me. And because all of us came together, like circle in the wagons, to protect ourselves, we're like under siege. And then from that, we're like, well, Let's collectively try to do something to, to define who we are the right way. People have been conditioned to be afraid of us. To, I can do an experiment, even you guys. I can say the same thing with or without a Middle Eastern accent. It can change the whole meaning. Watch if I say to you, hey, hey, wait till Friday night. We've been planning this for months. People will be talking about this for years. It could be a party, right? If I say, wait till Friday night. We've been planning this for months. People will be talking about this for years. There are people who don't know, know anything about us but the worst things. I can't blame them for not knowing anything about who we really are. It's up to us to go out there and do that. So as Dean said, we can't blame them for not knowing who we are. It's up to us to go out there and tell them who we are. And that's part of the reason why I chose this topic today, to teach you a little bit about who we are. I want to end with a personal story about a friend of mine. He's what you might consider typical Chicagoan. He loves his bears, his bulls, and the White Sox. He was born and raised in Chicago. 
His favorite foods include those Chicago favorites, Chicago style hot dogs, no ketchup, and Italian beef sandwiches. He also served this country in the U.S. National Guard and has worked in law enforcement for over 10 years. His name happens to be Osama. And I want you to think about what that name means in this country, in this post 9-11 era. Osama is actually a very popular Arabic name. It's a strong Arabic name, kind of like Michael or Charles, but in Arabic. Osama actually happens to also be my husband. And because of his name, he's regularly profiled at the airport, asked extra questions at security because his name is Osama. So that's our reality. And although we're proud to be American, we're just not quite white. Thank you.